Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Alina, I am a registered nurse and I work in aesthetics. And today I'm gonna to be talking about laser hair removal. So I'm in a little bit of a different setup and a different attire because I am in my role as a registered nurse. I'm gonna be letting you know everything about laser hair removal, how it works, what to expect during your treatments, what to expect for your results and realistic expectations. Stay tuned and I'm gonna answer all of those questions today. First, to start off, to understand what laser hair removal is, you need to understand the growth of hair. Our hair grows in different cycles. So I like to talk with my hands a lot, so you're gonna notice that, but let's say this is the hair follicle and then there's <laughs> the hair. About every four to six weeks, depending where on the body, on the face, it's every four weeks, on the body, it's about every six weeks, our hair goes through different hair cycle. So there's a point where the hair is actively growing, so it's getting longer, you see it grow, so the follicle is active. There is another part of the cycle where the hair isn't producing anything, it's dormant. It's not producing a hair, there isn't a hair getting longer, it's just a follicle hanging out. But the goal with laser hair removal is to come in about every four to six weeks so that you can catch the hair in its active growth cycle, okay? For the same reason, because our hair follicles are always going through different cycles, most people need an average of six treatments, and if you have a darker skin tone or darker skin type, you may require up to eight to 10 treatments. So how does laser hair removal work? Here I go with my hand animations again. So when I put the laser on top of the skin, let's say this is the hair that's sticking out and before treatment, you wanna make sure that it's shaped. So let's say the hair is just about there, just so you can see this is where the hair is. When I put the laser on top of the skin, it emits light energy at a certain level where it reaches the hair follicle. So it uses the pigment in the hair to travel down to the hair follicle and destroy that follicle so that it's not able to produce another hair. One very common question, can light hairs be treated? Well, if you think about it, if the laser is looking for pigment in the hair, then if your hair is white or light blonde, the laser won't be able to see the hair that well and isn't gonna be able to travel all the way down to the follicle and damage it. So no, laser hair removal does not work well on light colored hair, white hair, gray hair, it won't do anything like that. The answer is yes and no. <laughs> So it's not a very straightforward answer. You will get reduction in your hair. That means that you'll have less number of hairs. The hair will also be a lot thinner and slower growing, but it's not something that per is permanent because there's so many factors that affect hair growth hormones, stress, just changes in our body chemistry, and that can produce an inactive hair follicle to produce a hair. So it's not 100% permanent because our body lifestyle changes. So if you get pregnant, you'll notice you may have more hairs come out during pregnancy, even if you did laser hair removal in a certain area. If you start in certain medications, they can cause hair growth, antibiotic use, and certain hormonal conditions, even certain conditions like PCOS, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, anything that affects your hormones can affect hair growth. A lot of people need touch-up treatment anywhere between six months to a year. Coming in and keeping up with laser hair removal is gonna give you long longer lasting results. It's a couple things that I'm going to list that you don't want to come in for laser hair removal if this is your situation, if this applies to you. If you've been on Accutane in the last six months, any laser treatment is a no-go for you. So please wait at least six months after being on Accutane before doing laser hair removal. If you've been on antibiotics in the last week, give it at least a whole week after finishing your antibiotics before you do 
any laser treatment, especially laser hair removal. There are certain antibiotics that make you photosensitive, more sensitive to light, more sensitive to the sun, and more sensitive to light energy, which is what laser hair removal is. Pregnancy or breastfeeding, there is not enough research done on whether laser hair removal affects the baby or if you're breastfeeding. So don't take any risks, just wait until you're done breastfeeding. If you're trying to get pregnant, don't do any type of lasers. If you have tan skin, wait at least two weeks at least before you get laser hair removal and that's because you don't want to do lasers on tan skin. You can imagine if the laser is looking for pigment in your skin and you're tan, and it can malfunction and actually remove pigment from your skin. So rather than looking for that dark hair and treating the follicle, it can actually treat the skin and remove pigment from the skin. So you want to be very cautious of treating tanned skin. Just wait until your tan has faded. Don't do any fake tanning before your laser treatment. It's better for safety and for results. While you're doing laser treatments, you don't want to be waxing, threading, bleaching, plucking. You're pulling the hair out of the bulb. So that means the laser is not going to have its channel to get all the way down to the follicle and damage it so that it doesn't produce another hair. So you really slow down your results. If you're doing laser hair removal, you're investing the time and the money, then only shave during that period of time. And lastly, if you're using any chemical exfoliants or retinol in the area, you want to make sure that you don't use those at least a week before treatment. Really all chemical exfoliants make you more sensitive to the sun, which is why if you're using tretinoin, for example, you want to make sure that you're wearing sunscreen because it makes you more sensitive to the sun. Getting a sunburn, getting the bad damaging effects of the sun, ruining your skin really. So if you're using any chemical exfoliants, you it's possible that you can even get a burn from from your laser treatment so you want to make sure that you don't use anything and if you have used be honest tell your laser technician what you've used and reschedule your appointment if necessary active chemical exfoliants include salicylic acid lactic acid mandelic acid glycolic acid No numbing is required for laser hair removal. During the treatment, what you feel is similar to a snap of a hot rubber band. It's not 100% pain-free, although it is tolerable. But really, I found the best thing to do is to get it done quick, get it over with quick, because you feel that rubber band snap, but as soon as we go on to the next section, you don't feel that anymore. So know that it's a very temporary sensation. The things to expect after treatment. Not everybody gets these types of side effects, but they are things that you can experience. Personally, I get laser hair removal done, and so I've experienced some of these things, so I wanted to mention them. One thing is having little bumps on the skin. And as a provider, I want to see the little bumps on the skin. They're called PFE, perifollicular edema, and that pretty much means that the hair follicle is damaged because it, there's a little bit of a histamine swelling response going on. So seeing little bumps is very normal. They'll calm down and go away, usually by the end of the treatment, at least by the end of the day, for some people up to one to two days. If you're bothered by them, you can put hydro cortisone cream on top you can ice the area that helps with the swelling process you can take Benadryl Claritin Aleve any type of antihistamine to calm down the histamine response but really it's not that big of a deal it'll pass so don't worry about the PFEs there could be a little bit of redness sensitivity and tenderness left over on the area depending on the settings that were used how sensitive your skin is so usually again that calms down if by the end of the treatment by the end of the day or within one to two days. So another side effect is itchiness. Um, it also depends on how sensitive your skin is and how your immune system responds. How is your histamine response 
to uh, an inflammatory process because we are causing a little bit of inflammation in the body, enough to make some people triggered for it. Most important though is that you don't itch the skin because the skin is sensitive after and you can actually leave scarring if you itch too hard or you know leave marks on the skin. So try just not to itch the skin, just be very gentle with it. Use cold ice packs as a relief for inflammation. Just try to not think about it. Side effects that would be unusual would be blistering or crusting. That means most likely that the settings were too high. Blistering can leave scars on the skin. So if you do notice blisters, then put something on that holds on to moisture because the most important thing is that you don't get a scab because scabs can leave scars. If the area blisters or crust, let your provider know. Also something that would be unnormal is changes in the skin, in the skin color specifically. So if you notice that there's lightening of the skin or darkening of the skin, this is all an, an unusual reaction. So again, you want to let your provider know. A big thing that I always make sure to mention to my patients is that number one, you want to make sure that you're consistent. You really don't want to skip a whole treatment. You want to stay on top of your treatments and be consistent because your results will be a lot better that way. You also want to have patience. It is a process. Don't judge the results until you've had at least six done. It is important that you have somebody who is educated and knows what they're doing treating your skin. For me, safety is key when it comes to doing any type of aesthetic treatments. I will always put safety first. So I hope that this was very helpful for you. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like and comment if you have any other questions that I may not have answered. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.